Here we go. Well, greetings once again. In my last video, I did this particular little spatula. This is going to be a footnote to that video. Here's another piece that's uh, very similar. And it's in pretty rough shape. I need to put this on the lathe and, and turn the handle as I did in this spatula video. But today I want to talk a little bit about forming the actual spatula. And I did this off camera. Well, I got a good comment from Charles. And he said he would have liked to seen some of that. So I'm at my drill press where I do quite a bit of my sanding. And I'll show you some of the different sanding techniques and some of the foam pads uh, and whatnot that I use. Now, when I was ready to sand this, and I had the handle all done, I didn't do it all on my drill press with a sander. I did a little bit on the bandsaw, but you have to be careful when you have uh, a piece of wood that looks something like that. And it's pretty thick. That would take a lot of sanding to get that down. I did take some of that off, okay, to a point where I could sand it and complete it. So let me show you a couple of things that I use. Now in my drill press, I have chucked up a sanding drum. I've had a set of these, I bet, for 25 years, and I honestly can't remember where I got them, but I'm sure if you do a little search, you'll find them. And there's a mandrel, if that's what you call that, that you can simply chuck that up into your drill press. And they are marvelous. I've got different dimensions. I've got very, very narrow ones or small ones like that to fit different contours. And here's a very small one. That's probably half an inch. All right, so if you're doing some sort of, I don't know, detail work or fret work, these are really cool to have. And here's a sleeve. You simply put a new sleeve on there. And I have, I'm not sure what that is. It could be 60 grit. That's okay. Sometimes I use uh, these as a carving technique. Now I discovered a couple spatulas, I guess they are, where the handles are pretty much completed. And again, I'd much rather start something and let it sit there for 10 years. These are maybe a little bit thick to just start sanding. So I might take a little bit of that off on the bandsaw very carefully, all right? Keep your hands way far back and, you know, anyway, this one's way too thick. I got to do something with that and get that a lot thinner. But when it gets to the point where you want to sand it, you know, you've got a very good contour right here on this drum. And I just work both sides and do a little bit on on the edges and get that where I want it, want it to be. Simple as that. Now, if I'm using 60 or 80 grit, and that's probably what that is, I need to go to a finer sanding method. Now, before I show you the next thing, this is one of those crepe pads designed to clean off your sandpaper. And if you don't have one of these, get up and go to the big box store or order one. They will save you tons of money over the years. They're just marvelous. So you can clean your uh, sanding center disc and belt with these. Uh, I use them even if I've, if I've got uh, something chucked up into my drill. I've got these positioned, uh, screwed in different places around my lathes where all I have to do is just touch my sanding pad to that, and it cleans it up. It extends the life of your sandpaper tremendously. Now, here's another thing that I use on my drill press for sanding. And I'll take bowls or hollow forms or other objects that uh, I want to sand, and I maybe I've taken them off the lathe, and I just want to sand them here. I've got sandpaper, I believe it goes up to 400 grit, and uh, I'm not sure where I got this pad. This might have been from a random orbit sander, but it's got a nice thick foam pad on there that kind of conforms to what you're doing. 
So after I've used a really heavy grit, you know, I may start at 150 and work my way up to 320 on my spatula and just use this. So I've got that chucked up into my drill press. And I'm going to bring my dust collector hood close by right here. And I'm going to wear my Trend Air helmet and protect myself really well. But uh, that does a very nice job of, of cleaning up your project. And you can use some pretty fine sandpaper. You can blend these corners in right here. In addition to this sanding pad, I also use, you know, simply, you know, those, those smaller pads you might put into your, your drill. You know, depending on how large a project you're working on, and this is a, a great technique, putting things onto your drill press and using your drill press to sand. I'm going to end it there. I want to thank Charles for keeping me on my toes. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll talk to you next time.